mainframes, the powerhouse behind the world's biggest operations. For over 60 years, they've processed massive amounts of data with unmatched security and reliability. But wait, aren't mainframes supposed to be dead? 1996, that's when tech expert turned VC Stuart Elsop predicted the end of the mainframe. But by 2001, he was eating his words. People would come at this defensively and they're saying, you know, why should we keep our mainframe around? People thought that they could do what they did on the mainframe out in the cloud. As new technology surged forward, the mainframe was forced to modernize or risk becoming obsolete. The Linux Foundation's collaborative project, that gives a path for people to find this platform, commit code and get hands on. Today it powers 74% of the world's transactional workloads, known for unbeatable security, resilience and rock solid performance despite making up just 8% of total IT spend. The real challenge? Our generation is starting to move uh, onto retirement, so we need another group of people to run the mainframe environment. In this episode of Connected, we explore the efforts to bridge this gap, and you might be surprised by what we found out. I'm Diana Blass, let's get connected. Meet Joel Deserve, he always knew he wanted to work with computers, but he never imagined his future would be tied to a mainframe. Broadcom sponsored a class for my university. I went to Tennessee State University, and they held a class uh, for COBOL, which was the first introduction I ever got into the mainframe. And they taught me about getting into ISPF and JCL and all these different things that I never knew about. Getting into it and, and figuring out that it was just sort of this, this background thing that was running most of the world really got me interested in it more. His passion led him to Broadcom's mainframe vitality program after graduation, an intensive skills development program created to address customers' challenges in finding job-ready mainframe talent. And we place them uh, in a corporate apartment. Uh, they work with the customer. And during that time, it's like going to your job. We tell them, this is your audition to make this customer want to hire you. Broadcom isn't alone. IBM partners with over 120 colleges, and the Department of Labor has launched grants, veteran training, and academic programs to fill the gap. Efforts that took root when reports in the 2000s highlighted thousands of unfilled mainframe jobs. Meanwhile, cloud technology was on the rise, offering flexible, scalable computing. So we actually realized this problem quite a bit ago in terms of the attrition happening through retirement. And then a shift happened where, number one, IBM built better boxes that had higher capacity and therefore utilization went up, even though the number of mainframes had gone down. And in addition to that, there was a ton of development done around open mainframe standards. Open standards were a game changer. They introduced a common framework within the mainframe, ensuring interoperability, consistency, and compatibility across vendors and developers. This marked a significant shift from the proprietary software that once dominated the technology. Everything we've done in the Open Mainframe project allows those new, new developers to utilize the tools they're used to and that interface the back-end mainframe. It began with Zoe, an open source framework introduced in 2018 that helped to pull the mainframe into the modern era. You know, we're seeing the innovations in the COBOL space where we've taken COBOL from being a technology that's delivered, you know, developed on green screens to one that's being built in modern development tools like VS Code and IntelliJ. Um, and bringing a whole new generation of folks in using modern you know, techniques like unit testing and you know, things like that. We're doing it on the Linux side of the house as well with you know, building up um, you know, new collaborations and new technologies and you know, different ways of bringing people together and also collaborating across the various Linux distributions to help support um, the mainframe itself and help you know, support open source on the mainframe. And we're also starting to you know, see some interest on the AI space as well. No longer siloed, the mainframe is now a critical part of hybrid IT, shifting the narrative from mainframe versus the cloud to mainframe and the cloud. So now you actually see the mainframe usage growing again. So people are putting more effort into the mainframe, and it's mostly because those back-end transactions continue to go up. As more consumers and businesses relied on online platforms for everything from banking to shopping to communication, the volume of transactions soared. That continuously increases the capacity being used on the mainframe, which is good for us, but we also have to be able to show how do we make it easier to access while not 
limiting those qualities of service. It's proof that work within the mainframe is truly never over. As the industry constantly pushes to innovate, in turn creating new career paths with new opportunities. And when you're working on a mainframe job, it could be a development, it could be a systems and operational job, it could be one where you're working with different automation. For that reason, continuous upskilling has become essential. You know, half life of skills used to be years. You could learn COBOL and program the same way on COBOL for years and you wouldn't have to learn anything else. But these days, uh, your skills are good for maybe 12, 18 months. Darren Search is the CEO of Interskill, the provider of specialized online training programs tailored to the unique needs of mainframe professionals. It uses standards benchmarked with IBM and Broadcom digital credentials. The organization delivers over a million hours annually of on-demand learning, speaking to the value of skills-based hiring. So people can program, can come and work on the mainframe, uh, people that are, have good system skills or security skills, they don't need a four-year degree. If they have the skills that they need, um, they'll find uh, good work in the mainframe space and, and good career prospects. And these careers pay well too, typically 10 to 20 percent higher than other salaries in technology. And as a result, interest is high among job seekers. Just take a look at this study by the Futurum Group, revealing a dynamic landscape where mainframe skills continue to grow and diversify. Inside the report, 65 percent of university leaders say they've seen an uptick in skilled mainframe professionals, and 91 percent of employers plan to hire for new mainframe roles within the next two years. Yeah, I mean, based on our research, what we found was that it's no harder to pay in mainframe talent than it is to find cybersecurity or AI talent. There's plenty of resources, whether they're IBM resources, Broadcom resources, BMC resources, or just learning this stuff on the internet. And at the end of the, the sort of gold at the end of the rainbow, so you're going to be working for some of the biggest names in tech and have six bigger salaries not long out of college. Big tech names, six-figure salaries, and the opportunity to be a part of a close-knit community of skilled mainframers. In fact, many say the best part about working in the mainframe is the people. But don't just take my word for it. Check out these perspectives shared on a recent episode of The Main Scoop. I'm less than a year into my mainframe. And the thing that attracted me to this industry to begin with is, I think, the reason why so many businesses stick with the mainframe. It's reliable. Uh, in a world that feels more turbulent than ever, the mainframe feels like a rock of stability. Uh, and I know that it's going to be a dependable platform and a dependable career for many years to come. Ever since my understanding of a mainframe expanded beyond an idea of a big computer that runs your credit card transactions, I had a sneaking suspicion that I was going to be very happy in this space, and I'm looking forward to potentially having quite a long career here, even though I am just at the very beginning, because right now my passion is running very high for this field, and that's not something I can say about very many things. You know what I love most about the mainframe is the people in the mainframe. The people who designed and believed that this was possible, the people who founded the culture, the people who gave us cultural things that are still part of, of who we are and what we do, and the new generation of people who are bringing their own culture, their sensibilities, their understanding, their ideas, their innovations and insights to continue to move the mainframe forward. So while some are ready to write the mainframe's obituary, the truth is... Having that experience in your back pocket can take you to a lot of places, and I, no, no one here that I've seen is uh, keeping that secret. So I guess you can say the secret's out. The mainframe isn't just surviving, it's thriving. And this story is far from over. So stay with me and you'll stay connected. Until next time, I'm Diana Blass.